I'm Jen Bentley, the dermatologist here, and I've got my special guest, Dr. Matt Vaughn, who is our internist here at BRCCO. And this St. Patrick's Day, we are talking about everything inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. Um, and so we're thankful to have Dr. Vaughn here. He is quite the expert on this disease. I know you see quite a bit of this disease sure. um, here. Um, but as always, guys, if you have any questions, comments, um, please feel free to type those in and we'll be happy to, to discuss those. So yeah, feel free to join the discussion. Um, but I will, I'll start us off and just kind of, let's start with the basics. What exactly is inflammatory bowel disease and how do our dogs and cats get it? Yeah, so inflammatory bowel disease, it's a term that gets thrown around a lot and it encompasses some, dirt, some certain factors. Um, it's uh, a common cause of uh, intestinal signs like vomiting or diarrhea in dogs and cats. Um, but the underlying issue is inflammation within the walls of the intestine. And that inflammation can be set up from things within the food, so certain things within the diet, proteins uh, specifically. Um, or sometimes the immune system in the gut is reacting to bacteria that in the gut that should be tolerated in a normal part of the intestines. Uh, but it is not well tolerated, and that creates an inflammatory response, and then uh, chronic intestinal disease. Um, signs of inflammatory bowel disease, there's uh, a few, and not every patient has every one. In fact, they usually don't have all of them, but it might be something just like weight loss and no other signs at all. Uh, most commonly, it would be a combination of diarrhea or vomiting, okay. and sometimes a poor appetite. So poor appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, um, and weight loss would be the big four. But like I said, most patients don't have all of them. It just may just be one or two of those. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then it seems like, you know, as far as, you know, it, it's this inflammatory disease there, but it, it does have quite a bit of different causes or, or provocations to this. Um, does that make the diagnostic workup challenging and expensive or is it pretty straightforward? It can. I would say um, most true cases of inflammatory bowel disease are, a young to middle-aged uh, dog or cat disease. And um, it may be simple to treat as in a special diet. And there's many, many different types of special diets out there. I know as a dermatologist, you use a lot of special what? diets for, for food allergies. A lot of food allergies manifest as skin problems and not intestinal, but there can be some food intolerances or they can stimulate uh, or, or cause inflammatory bowel disease. So I see the intestinal side of things. So uh, a lot of those special restricted diets and sometimes it's as easy as that. Um, but there's no, um, on our standard regular blood tests that we do, like a blood chemistry panel or a blood count, there's nothing on those that indicates this is inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. There are some markers sometimes that we might say, hey, there's in intestinal disease present. And it's really important in a dog or a cat that's vomiting that we look at other causes of vomiting outside the intestine. So kidneys, liver disease, uh, other disorders that might lead to those same signs. Sure. So that's why we oftentimes start with things like, like a standard blood test to make sure it's not something outside of the intestine. But there aren't a lot of good uh, intestinal markers on our standard blood tests that indicate this is the intestine or this is what's going on in the intestine. Yeah, kind of similar to allergies. I wish there was a blood test that right? could tell me yeah. exactly yeah. what was going on. That would yeah. be nice. <laughs> um, and then to confirm or to, to prove it is inflammatory bowel disease, does that require a biopsy of the intestines or so, is that something that happens you know, later on in the diagnostic process? That happens a little bit later. I mean, I see patients all the time for vomiting or diarrhea or weight loss and most have had blood work done because they've seen their regular vet uh, as they should. Um, and then they come to see me because things aren't getting better. And so a full workup, a full diagnostic workup or pathway that we usually use for inflammatory, what we suspect might be inflammatory bowel disease. So those chronic intestinal signs would be standard blood work. Um, we oftentimes then do an ultrasound of the abdomen, but I always tell clients an ultrasound doesn't diagnose inflammatory bowel disease. What I'm looking for with an ultrasound, are there other types of intestinal disease present that we might diagnose? Uh, and if there are changes in the intestine, where are they? So we're looking for things like intestinal tumors, uh, evidence of uh, inflammation in the pancreas or pancreatitis. And if there's thickening to the intestine, where is that thickening? But many patients with inflammatory bowel disease, we may do an ultrasound and it's completely normal. So okay. we've, we've crossed off, off a lot of things off the list, but we haven't made that diagnosis of inflammatory bowel, bowel disease. Um, other things we do are some other special blood tests to look at 
how well the intestine is absorbing things and is the pancreas diseased or not. Uh, so we do some blood tests for that. Um, but the, the gold standard diagnosis for inflammatory bowel disease is a biopsy of the intestine. And, and I do that here with endoscopy. So we look with a camera, we go look at the, what does the stomach look like? What did the intestines look like? Uh, and we get little biopsies. So it's a pretty quick procedure, um, but it's usually the last thing we do because it creates, uh, you know, it's greater expense. It's an anesthetic sure. procedure, um, but that's how we confirm the diagnosis and make sure we're not missing some of the other things on the list that can cause similar signs. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of, you know, if there's someone who, who comes in here, you're suspecting inflammatory bowel disease and starting that workup, um, is there a chance that you can just treat for inflammatory bowel disease without doing the major diagnostics if, you know, say finances are an issue or, um, cause, you know, there's always a balance there um, sometimes. Yeah. Um, is that a possibility or do you really need to have, say, okay, yes, we need biopsies and really need to have that diagnosis before you start treatment? Yeah. Well, I mean, every case we look at, you know, the overall case and what are all the factors and what works best for the family and for the pet. And so, uh, for sure, because so much of inflammatory bowel disease is a reaction to the food types, it is ne absolutely never wrong to do a food trial before jumping into all these diagnostic yeah. tests. So I wouldn't do a food trial before maybe having that regular blood work done with your regular vet because we don't want to be missing kidney failure or liver failure here. But if there's some chronic uh, diarrhea, and many of the patients I see have been on a food trial already. So but, and that's because their vet's done a great job and has recommended that already. So it's never wrong to start with that. And with the food trial, we're, we're talking about uh, typically one protein source, one carbohydrate, you know, nothing else in, you know, very limited ingredients, so very basic diet. And um, I think the best ones of those are typically prescription diets because there's a high, higher level of control over those. And those are things that can be obtained from either, we have some here, but, but your regular vets uh, uh, carry a lot of those types of food. So always... Uh, reasonable to start with that. And then, you know, we can do some things. If it's an older dog, I really push for that ultrasound to say, hey, let's make sure we're not dealing with a, a type of intestinal cancer here. Um, and then if we don't have those options, we talk about other medications. So we treat a lot of inflammatory bowel disease with a, a, a basically like a cortisone or a drug called prednisone. Um, that drug's got a lot of side effects. And once we start it, it's hard to make a diagnosis there. So I have those conversations. And so uh, I always like to know a diagnosis before we jump into medications, but not everybody is able to go through with all those diagnostics. So we work in a logical stepwise fashion to say, let's try this medication or this medication. And if we have to try that medication, we talk about the pros and cons and move forward with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of, I mean, it, it is a very complicated disease and definitely a complicated workup for it. Um, and Definitely, we're, we're great to have Dr. Vaughn here to be able to, to help people and work them through that. Um, is there anything you wish, you know, owners would know um, about IBD at home um, that you feel like they don't know or they don't understand? I think the biggest thing in, in, uh, that, you know, we try to emphasize is when we do a diet trial, that it's that diet. And so, you know, a special diet is a waste of money if we're gonna feed it and then give some bacon scraps on top or, you know, give them yes. some, you know, other scraps or mix in a little bit of this or add some chicken on top because that takes away, they have to just be on that diet. And so that's that's really important. And 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 in my world with, with diarrhea and vomiting, usually we see a response fairly quickly. I know with the skin, it takes a while of being on that diet before you can really assess your response. but but it's important for a number of weeks to be just on that diet and know what we're, know what we're dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Same goes for my patients on the diet trials too. It's yeah. nothing inside that mouth except for the diet and that is it for that period of time. How long do you do your diet trials for? Well, I usually I'm gonna see a response if it's diarrhea within, usually within two weeks, but I'll give it four weeks yeah. and to feel confident, but usually within two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Awesome. And that goes for medications too. There's a lot of chewable medications these days that are flavored. And I've had some patients with very sensitive inflammatory bowel disease that get that once a month heartworm pill yeah. that's flavored and that sets them off and they get diarrhea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, if you're just joining us, we are talking about uh, inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. And if you have any questions for Dr. Vaughn, um, please let us know now, or you can also chime in after the show and ask questions and we'll be happy to get back uh, with you. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. 
Um, I think uh, we're going to be back here with Facebook Live in two weeks, um, always Wednesday at four o'clock. And I believe next time we will be talking about uh, toxins inside the house uh, with Dr. Pinella.